August 15, 1918, Hokkaido resident Suzuki Eikichi went to visit a Taisho era exhibition taking place in Sapporo. On his way back, he bought a Japanese doll wearing a kimono with a bob cut. He gave it to his younger sister, Kikuko, only three years old, as a gift. Kikuko was most pleased with the doll. She played with it every day and showed her affection by sleeping with it every night. However, on January 24th the following year, the young Kikuko suddenly died of a cold. Eikichi, distraught, enshrined both her remains and the doll in the family altar, which he prayed by every morning while remembering his sister. It was around that time that something strange started to happen. Surprisingly, the doll's hair started to grow, and what was once a bob started to grow past the doll's shoulders. Kikuko's family believed that the girl's spirit had transferred to the doll. In 1938, Eikichi moved to Sakhalin. He gave the doll and his sister's remains to the Mannenji Temple in Kurisawa City, Hokkaido. Then, after the war, Eikichi was thankfully able to return to his hometown. Yet, when he visited the temple and stood before the doll once more, strangely, he noticed its hair had grown even longer. Perhaps Kikuko's spirit really had taken up residence in there. Chances are good that you've heard about this particular legend before, even if you didn't know the doll's particular name. A cursed doll with hair that continues to grow. Okiku is a legend amongst terrifying tales of dolls. The Okiku doll, Kiku meaning chrysanthemum, with the O being an honorific prefix, is very real and it can be found in the Mannenji Temple in Hokkaido. The doll stands roughly 40 centimeters high, wearing a red kimono with hair of varying lengths, depending on whether the monks have cut it recently or not. But does the doll's hair really continue to grow 100 years later, like this urban legend suggests? Let's take a look. Although the legend states that everything takes place during the 1920s and 30s, the first time this story appeared to the public was in 1962, and that story was rather different to the one told today. Journalist Mabuchi Yuta wrote the following article for the August 6th, 1962 issue of Shukan Josei Jishin. On the Hinamatsuri of March 3rd, 33rd year of the Showa era, Maina Suzuki Sukeshichi, 36, visited a temple to entrust them with something important. This is my daughter. Please look after her well, he said, leaving behind those puzzling words before moving to faraway Honshu. He never returned. The doll he handed over to the temple was placed in the corner and then forgotten. Summer, three years later, chief priest Imagawa Junno 59, had a strange dream for two nights in a row. Suzuki-san stood by his pillow, drenched like he had been doused with water. He spoke to the monk, his voice piercing. Please cut my daughter Kiyoko's hair. Chief Priest Imagawa retrieved the doll, but when he looked upon it, he involuntarily screamed. A chill ran down his spine. The doll's hair had grown. The bob cut that only reached its ears had grown to its waist. We can see the differences quite plainly from this version of the story to the one told today. First, the doll was given to the temple in 1959, not 1938. The daughter's name was Kiyoko, not Kikuko, and it was Sukeshichi, the father, who took the doll to the temple, not Eikichi. Eikichi isn't mentioned once. Sukeshichi also never returned to the temple, and it was the chief priest who discovered the doll's hair had grown. At this point, the doll wasn't even called Okiku. The father of this story, Sukeshichi, said his daughter's name was Kiyoko. However, in the July 15, 1968 issue of Young Lady, Six years later, the name of Okiku makes its first appearance, coincidentally enough, in an article written by the same journalist, 
Mabuchi Yuta. This story goes as follows. A large exhibition was held in Sapporo, Hokkaido, 1918. And on his way home, Sukeshichi, holding his daughter Kikuchan, stopped by a doll shop in the Tanuki Koji shopping district to buy a doll. Ever since that time, Kikuchan would cling to and play with the doll, and even when she went to sleep, she wouldn't let it go. However, Kikuchan fell ill to pneumonia the next year thanks to a cold and passed away. She died on March 24th. Years passed, and in August 1938, Sukeshichi moved to Maoka, Sakhalin, to work in the mines there. He brought Kikuchan's remains, together with her doll, along to me. I put the doll in the drawer beneath the pedestal of Tathagata, and though I shouldn't have forgotten about it, I did. Then, after the war, it was the spring of 1955. When I was cleaning the temple, I came across the doll once more, and when I looked upon it, I saw hair was growing out of the wrapping paper covering it. The doll had short hair when I took it in. Here we can see some more familiar features of the story taking shape. First, events have been moved back to the Taisho era from the Showa era. Sukeshichi, originally born in 1923, now has a daughter in 1918. The dead girl's name has changed to Kiku, and her date of death given as March 24th. The doll was then given to the temple in 1938, and the chief priest discovered the doll's hair was growing whilst cleaning, not thanks to a dream. While the story presented in Young Lady was much closer to the legend in its present form thanks to these changes, it still wasn't until two years later, in the August 15th, 1970 edition of the Hokkaido Shimbun, that the current version of the story was printed for the first time. It was here that the Mannenji Temple acknowledged that they were indeed of possession of the doll, and revealed it to the public for the first time. So yes, the Okiku doll is real. You can visit it in Mannenji Temple right now, and yes, its hair really does grow. But how? Several explanations have been given over the years, ranging from the glue used to keep it in place feeding it nutrients, to even more supernatural reasons that can never be proven or disproven. The real reason, however, is likely much simpler. The secret lies in the way Japanese dolls are built. The hair inside the doll's head is threaded into a U-shape. Say, for example, you wanted to make a doll with hair that was 10 centimeters long. The doll makers would take a length of hair over twice that length, around 25 centimeters, and wind it into a loop around the center. They then insert that loop into the empty space in the doll's head, affix it with glue to stabilize it, and voila! A single piece of hair has been threaded. So while the hair only appears 10 centimeters long from the outside, each strand is actually double that length, with the rest hidden inside the doll's head. As the glue weakens over the years, the strands of hair slowly come apart and appear to grow. Of course, they can only grow to the roughly 25 centimeters in length that's inside the doll's head before it falls out entirely. The priests of Mannenji Temple have never allowed anyone to examine the doll, so it's impossible to say for certain what is happening with Okiku. But knowing how Japanese dolls are made, this seems to be the most likely explanation. Nothing supernatural, just great craftsmanship slowly breaking down over time. Yet another common rumor about the Okiku doll is that its expression changes depending on the day and who's looking at it. Again, this can be answered quite simply without resorting to the supernatural, and is another characteristic of these Japanese-made dolls. They are created intentionally, so that, depending on the angle you view the doll from, its facial expression appears to change, just like a no mask. The doll is supposed to look different, whether viewed from the front, side, above, or below. Again, nothing supernatural at work here. 
just incredible craftsmanship. But what about the Okiku doll's many name changes? Now, no reason is ever given for the change from Kyoko to Kikuko as the story developed over the years. Kyoko means clean or pure child and fits the theme of the original story well. Yet the next time the story appeared, her name changed to Kikuko, meaning chrysanthemum child, with the doll eventually gaining the honourable o prefix and losing the child suffix. There could be several reasons for this, first and foremost being that the original author simply felt this name suited her better. There is, however, a type of doll made in Japan that goes by the name Kikuningyo, or Kiku doll. These are life-size dolls where the head, hands and feet are constructed of doll material, but the body consists of a wooden frame that is then decorated with chrysanthemum flowers. They were first made during the Edo period and remain popular to this day. It's possible that the author was trying to draw a parallel to these world-famous Japanese dolls. Then there is the story of Okiku, a ghostly tale from the 1700s. Okiku, bearing the same name as the doll, was a story about a woman aptly named Okiku who was a beautiful servant to a samurai named Aoyama. The samurai made advances upon Okiku often, but she always refused him. Frustrated, he tricked Okiku into believing one of her family's ten precious plates was missing. Knowing this would result in her death, Okiku furiously counted and recounted the plates, over and over, only ever finding nine. She went to Aoyama in tears and he promised that he would overlook the matter if she became his lover. Okiku again refused and Aoyama threw her to her death in a well in rage. Okiku then rose as a vengeful spirit and each night counted to nine before screaming a horrible, high-pitched shriek. She was not placated until an exorcist shouted ten at the end of her count, making her believe that the long-lost tenth plate had finally been found. This story is particularly famous, so the name Okiku already has supernatural associations attached to it. It certainly makes for a more terrifying doll's name in the Japanese mind than Kyoko does. These are just some of the explanations and potential theories behind the Okiku doll's history and mysteriously growing hair, but what did you guys think of this one? Do you have any similar legends in your own country? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again next time.